This week on The Record, Wesley Bell is running for Congress, but why did he drop his bid for the Senate? And how would he be different than Congresswoman Cori Bush? He was Donald Trump's attorney general. One of the former president's loudest critics still says he's open to voting for Trump in November. But will Bill Barr back one of Trump's primary challengers and his new focus on fentanyl? Plus, with a bitter budget battle in St. Louis County, what exactly constitutes a cut? We check the record to sift through all the spin. It's coming up right now. Welcome to The Record. I'm Mark Maxwell. St. Louis could become home to one of the most hotly contested primary races for a seat in Congress. Democrat Cori Bush toppled longtime incumbent Lacey Clay back in 2020, easily winning re-election against State Senator Steve Roberts in 2022, and now faces a challenge from former Ferguson councilman turned St. Louis County prosecutor. St. Louis County prosecuting attorney Wesley Bell is now on The Record. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, a lot of people are curious to watch your race for Congress, wondering what your path to victory might be. As you well know, Congresswoman Cori Bush was quite popular in the last election. You're going to need to make some inroads with city voters, voters who haven't voted for you yet. Do you hope that Mayor Jones will be an ally of yours? Have you asked her for an endorsement? You have to understand, I'm, I'm not um, new to uh, elections. I was initially um, elected in 2000. Uh, 15 in Ferguson and then a tough run for county prosecutor in 2018 and so I've, I've been around the block a few times when it comes to election what with me and what I've learned from from those experiences is that it's about the outreach to community to voters and and reaching to them and making that direct connection as much as possible. And that's something that even after the elections, I never stopped doing. Endorsements don't hurt. You've already, your mm -hmm. campaign has already touted some of them, endorsements from mm -hmm. different labor groups. Would you like the mayor's endorsement? I mean, we want everyone's endorsement. We want everyone's vote um, if, if, if possible. But I also don't want to put people in, in uncomfortable positions because they have, there's relationships that have been built amongst uh, different folks in the region. You know, I've worked. She very, was a backer of Cori Bush. I've, and she's been a supporter of mine as well. Um, and she's and I also consider her a good friend. And so she'll she'll speak on those issues when 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 uh, in her own time or she may not speak on them at all. But either way, we're going to continue to do the work uh, of, of moving this region forward. And that includes the mayor and all our community partners. Did you ever seek an endorsement from Cori Bush when you were running for the Senate? Like I said, when, when I'm running for Senate, this like can campaigns happen? You want everybody's um, endorsement. Is that a yes? Um, and so what, what, I would, what I'll say is, though, is, Mark, is that there are things that I was not aware of that I'm aware of now. Um, and at this point, and, 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 and I've answered this question publicly and privately, there were a culmination of things that got me into this race. Um, and and once I made that decision, I knew it was the right decision to make. And and we, I believe that our district deserves better representation, and that's what I intend to bring. Did you vote for Cory Bush in 22? Did, what happens in the ballot? In, I, I got you. In, so in, the sanctity is, of the ballot. Yeah, sanctity but, of the ballot. Uh, you, you just mentioned a minute ago that mm -hmm. uh, you know something now that you didn't know prior. I wanted to ask you what you know now that you didn't know in 2022, if perhaps you voted for it at the time. Well, you know, first of all, I, I've... I've known the former congressman for years, and you know what I'll say is is that when I was elected, he was still the congressman, and he showed up in my office and asked on on, on a couple different occasions or made phone calls to say, "Hey, what do you need?" And this is Lacey Clay you're referring this is, to. This is Congressman Clay, correct? And so um, he's always been someone who has been a uh, you know someone that I could reach out to if I've, if I've ever had questions. Um, as a mentor as well um, and in and, and many regards and so I have a lot of respect for the work him and his father have done in this district um, and so uh, you know but going forward I think the, the the issue Mark is what does this district deserve as far as representation and resources coming back and none of these jobs are permanent they're, 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 we serve at the pleasure of the voters. That's true. And if we're not doing a good job or, um, or we're doing a good job, we're going to have to answer to that at, during, during the election. And so in this election, voters are going to have a clear um, distinction as far as who they want to support, and, and I'm hoping that they'll support me. Who's backing you and who's with you is 
somewhat interesting. I think more voters want to know what you would do with power if you got to Capitol Hill. How would you be different from Congresswoman Cori Bush? And I want to use an example. She often says, yeah, I voted against the infrastructure bill, but I helped negotiate it. And by staking out my position, I helped raise issues important to St. Louis and put those things on the map. Josh Hawley often, frankly, different party, uses a similar tactic. And he, he's explained that tactic. He'll, he'll be a hard no until he can move the negotiation a little bit closer to his direction. Do you see that as an effective tool? No. What, what I see is, is that people want to play both sides. And politicians have been known to, to, to do that. Many politicians have given this, this, this job a bad rap as a result of that approach. And I have a mantra, a guiding principle that I don't do anything I can't defend or explain. And so with me, and, and, and I think that uh, past uh, decisions um, inform what someone's going to do in the future. And what I've made a point to do is we're going to get people working together. I stood between police and protesters to help calm tensions and actually bring reforms like court reforms, working with President Obama's at the time, Department of Justice, uh, to bring, uh, uh, help bring p community policing. I worked with many North County cities to create the North County Policing Cooperative, which had an emphasis on, which made an emphasis of community policing. And, and I think we need more of that in D.C. We need more folks who are going to be committed to working together, and that means there's, there's there's times when we're going to take a stance, but there's times when we're going to also work with people that we may disagree with because that's the only way we're going to move this region and this country forward is if we're focused on not demonizing one another, but working together. My last question for you is this. You said there will be times you take a stand. Mm -hmm. Congresswoman Bush, for better or worse, has taken stands against the Biden administration. She's voted against things that were popular with the Democratic Party. On this Israel-Palestine issue, she's taken a stand there, too. What are your red lines? Are there positions where you say, you know what, whether it's the party line or not, this is something I'm willing to break with the party for? Um, it's, a, it's a simple, bright line test, right and wrong. And That's very subjective, is it? No, I don't think it is. I think sometimes I think we polarize and we politicize things, but I and, and and I think people complicate issues, but oftentimes issues aren't complicated. Now let's be clear: some are. I, I acknowledge that. But with the infrastructure bill, the infrastructure bill impacted and helped folks right here in this district. It helped with not only clean water, but we're talking roads and bridges. We're talking um, our basic infrastructure, helping bridge the digital gap for a lot of folks who don't have access to, to internet and things of that nature, which is the way of the world. And it passed easily. And it passed. And so to then turn around and not support it, but then tout it as if, as if, as if you did, I think that that is, I think that's disingenuous. I think it's inauthentic and I don't think it, and, and I think it goes against the needs and, and the wants uh, of what folks need right here in this district. President Biden calls it voting no and taking the dough. You know what? I think that's, I think that's probably a good um, assessment and uh, an accurate assessment of what it is. At the end of the day, we need folks who are going to uh, be committed to working together. We got enough people that are looking to polarize and politicize every single issue um, and nothing gets done. We need folks up there who are going to help build consensus because that's what our government is built on. We're going to stand with our allies. We're going to stand against terrorism, but we're going to bring resources back home to the folks that need it. And one thing folks know in this region, they know me. I'm going to show up, and that's a big part of this job. All right. He's the top prosecutor from the largest county in Missouri. Wesley Bell, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. He was the attorney general for two Republican presidents. Now he's tackling the fight on the fentanyl crisis. Bill Barr is on the record next. This may look like a holiday shopping showdown, but it's a Nissan sales event to add. Good thing my road has intelligent all-wheel drive. So does my Altima. Now get 2.9% APR financing for 60 months or save up to $2,500 on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. Better hurry. These offers won't be back in stock. Your neighbor for life. Neighbors Credit Union. 
Is your little boy or girl off the naughty list? Well, don't miss your last chance to get toys at a huge sale December 17th at your local Farm Gnome Supply. Here are some of our favorite deals, including this Build a Buddy tractor for under 20 bucks and this huge remote control buggy for under 50 bucks. And get 25% off our huge selection of Melissa and Doug, including barn and pizzas. And get 20% off all games and puzzles, including a new favorite, Chicken Poo Bingo. And one of our best sellers from last year is back. This toy hauler is under 25 bucks. See all these deals and more right now at farmandhomesupply.com. Arby's added six pieces of bacon to Arby's burger. Adding more stuff wouldn't be responsible. So Arby's took a step back and doubled the cheese anyway. Arby's, we have the meat. Renewal by Anderson can make replacing your windows and doors really affordable. And getting a price? <laughs> well, that's easy. Just scan this code and self-schedule your own appointment. You don't have to talk to anyone. And you can do it 24 hours a day. Just scan and pick a date and time that work for you. Renewal by Anderson has more five-star reviews than other leading full-service window replacement companies. Learn why. Scan the code now to self-schedule your window and door appointment. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick Park system. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Oh, I got a six cents. And a head-up display. They're here. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Discover the joy this holiday season and get 1.9% APR. Plus, current eligible non-GM owners get up to $12.50 purchase allowance on 2023 Buick SUV models. Plus, no monthly payments for 90 days. Our country's founding documents declare we have a God-given right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But a rapidly rising trend poses a significant threat to all three. Fentanyl is one of the fastest growing killers in this country and often strikes by surprise. Now, a man who twice wore the badge as the nation's top cop is taking on that challenge. Former U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr is now on the record. Mr. Attorney General, great to have you with us. I know you're here to talk about this fentanyl crisis. I want to get to that in just a moment. First, a lot of voters are watching this presidential election cycle. We've seen some quotes that you're not still decided on who you might vote for in a general election. Who do you like in this Republican primary? You know, I've, I've made clear that uh, I'd like to see someone other than uh, Trump as the Republican nominee, and I haven't uh, picked one uh, of the of the challengers, I think DeSantis and and Nikki Haley uh, and Chris uh, Christie are doing a, a really good job. And the reason I'm not for Trump is because I think one of these others would win a far more decisive victory and give us the strength in Washington. And uh, more than just a lame duck, it would give us two or three more terms uh, to get the changes we need to turn America around and get it on the right track. And I think the recent poll, for example, on uh, Nikki Haley showing that she would have the biggest victory over the Democrats since Ronald Reagan sort of illustrates that point. So I think the Republicans should go for the biggest uh, victory uh, in order to in order to turn things around in this country. That That's sounds like you're I am. Sounds like you're leaning toward Nikki Haley in that case. Whoever can show uh, that they can uh, have the best chance of beating Trump. And uh, I think we'll see that maybe uh, after uh, New Hampshire. Interesting question. You've been working with this American Free Enterprise Chamber of Commerce on the issue of the fentanyl crisis and fake pills. Uh, many Americans may know that uh, fentanyl is not, it's often f shows up in places where uh, people might least expect it, or it shows up blended with something else. In your view, is the Department of Justice doing enough to identify where these fake pills are appearing in the marketplace? Yeah, I, th I do think the department uh, on the enforcement side uh, has a very strong effort, and obviously it needs to be stepped up more. Uh, resources are a constant constraint on the law enforcement side. But we think we know where it's coming from, and we're getting more and more intelligence and more and more information. The precursor chemicals largely come from China. They are sent to Mexico, and they're fabricated into pills that are made to look like things like Adderall and Xanax, you know, study drugs or party drugs that are often taken by young people. And then they're smuggled into the United States in vast numbers. It's a hard thing to police against. Probably the most important thing we can do now to save lives at the front end are uh, public services like you're providing here by covering the story and help educate the public about the hazards 
of these pills. And basically, when you don't buy drugs with a prescription through authorized channels at a drugstore, an FDA-approved drugstore, you're taking a big risk, especially when you buy them through social media and online. You heard the announcement from China's President Xi Jinping that that nation is going to try and crack down on the manufacturers that make many of these ingredients before they arrive and are blended in those uh, synthetic pills in Mexico or, or elsewhere. Uh, how do you evaluate the, uh, the, the intention of a claim like that? We've heard China make those claims before. Uh, how will you know when they're following through on that promise? So the Chinese really don't have much of an incentive uh, to get on top of this problem because uh, they view it as an American problem, that we're a degenerate society with, and, and that we have people who take drugs, and that's sort of our problem to deal with. On the other hand, when we press them, they do take steps to curtail it to some degree. So, for example, they did penalize fentanyl before the United States did, and we had a harder time getting Congress to move than we had getting China to move. But still, it is a very, it's a vast industry they have, a drug industry. There are a lot of fly-by-night players there. It's frankly hard for them to police it, even if they had the will, the will to do it. I wouldn't rely on the Chinese to solve this problem. They, you know, they, they may take some steps that help, but they're not going to help us solve the problem. And the other thing is this, those precursors can be made in India. And the cartels themselves are starting to try to get into uh, this field so that they can completely domesticate the industry in yeah. Mexico. It's one of the most lethal killers in American society today. And there have been some uh, other examples where uh, healthcare providers and others have tried to provide test strips to people so they know what they're taking as sort of a soft on crime approach, if you will, to almost facilitate the safe use of other drugs that are not fentanyl. To what extent is that a solution here? If, if the awareness is there, but we're also still seeing the deaths and the drugs are still showing up, it's hard to police, what options are we left with? Well, you know, there's all, there are two ways to deal with it, and they both we, both, we need both, and that is supply and demand. And on the demand side, uh, we try to educate people, curtail demand, and also provide these kinds of mitigating actions, such as you say. It can be Narcan, uh, and that can be test strips and other things that will help us save lives. And, and there's more and more research and development going on uh, to see whether we can provide antidotes and things like that to these drugs, and I'm all for that. The second aspect on, on demand side is education, which you're doing today. Uh, and then there's the enforcement side, and uh, I think we have to go much more aggressively after uh, the cartels and uh, f also compel the Mexican government to provide a lot more assistance than they're providing. All right, Mr. Attorney General, thank you for joining us. When we come back, the latest on an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. That's next. Celebrate the season under a million twinkling lights. Five on Your Side is proud to welcome in the season with Winter Wonderland at Tillis Park. Make it a family tradition. Visit Winter Wonderland this holiday season. Presented by Firely RV. Most doctors recommend daily walks because of the many health benefits associated with walking. But how do you get healthy circulation boosting activity without leaving your chair? With Legsercise Pro, the natural circulation booster that uses continuous automatic leg movement to soothe pain and promote healthy circulation the natural drug-free way. Soothe pain and calm restless legs. Reduce swelling in your legs, ankles, and feet and stimulate healthy circulation. Stay active with Legsercise Pro. Dad, we always do commercials about new cars. Don't you think we should let people know that we have a huge inventory of pre-owned vehicles as well? It's a great idea. We should tell them about our pre-owned pedigree program. What's that? We have factory certified vehicles with a three-day exchange policy, each with a 127-point inspection, full history review, plus a review of the vehicle by the previous owner. And if you want to sell your car, come to Glendale. We buy all makes and models, even if you don't buy from us. Glendale Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, just a mile east of Lindbergh on Manchester and goodcars.com. I'm Susie Vreeland with iBuySTL, and I want to buy your house. I'll make you an as-is cash offer on your house within 24 hours. Whether it's a total fixer-upper or in perfect condition, iBuySTL.com is the easiest way to sell your house. When you sell to iBuySTL, there's no fees, no commission, no banks, no repairs. 
Just go to iBuySTL.com for your free, no obligation, cash offer, 24 hours a day. That's iBuySTL.com. Title Max got your money, your free. Get started at TitleMax.com and turn your title into cash. Get up to $10,000 today using your car title. Most credit types accepted. I got $2,500 with my car title from TitleMax. Visit TitleMax.com today to find out how much you can get. I got $1,500 with a personal loan from TitleMax. Life is full of options, but when it comes to cash, the choice is clear. Get your title back with TitleMax. Arby's added six pieces of bacon to Arby's burger. Adding more stuff wouldn't be responsible. So Arby's took a step back and doubled the cheese anyway. Arby's, we have the meat. Congress is officially investigating President Joe Biden. Every Republican in the House voted to authorize an impeachment inquiry, opening up an investigation into potential wrongdoing. Some Republicans believe the president's son, Hunter Biden, engaged in a foreign influence peddling scheme. Hunter Biden insisted this week his father was never involved in his business affairs. Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raoul pushed Democrats in the General Assembly to crack down on deceptive practices at so-called crisis pregnancy centers. Those are places where counselors often try to talk women out of abortion procedures. Late Monday, Raul agreed with anti-abortion groups who had sued to stop the state's enforcement of that same new law he had supported. A federal judge had temporarily blocked it from taking effect. The Thomas More Society claimed the law would, quote, silence pro-life viewpoints. Raul says his office is still committed to protecting abortion rights in Illinois. The U.S. Supreme Court will not consider a challenge to an Illinois assault weapons ban and registration requirement, at least not yet. That means the new law will take effect January 1st. A powerful rules committee known as JCAR met Tuesday, but did not add any new changes on how police or prosecutors might enforce the law. The first offense for failing to register a banned semi-automatic firearm is a misdemeanor. A repeat offense would be a felony. The U.S. House and Senate have now passed the new defense bill, that National Defense Authorization Act. The NDAA does not include any provisions for abortion and transgender health care access, nor does it include expanded funding under the Radioactive Exposure Compensation Act, RECA. That amendment would have provided compensation for tens of thousands of Americans, especially in the St. Louis area, those exposed to radioactive material. Congresswoman Anna Wagner voted for the NDAA and said, quote, I will continue advocating for this issue so our constituents can get the help and support they deserve. We correct the record next. Jack, the data shows that people love our more flavorful ultimate cheeseburgers. Show me the data. So the data's good. The data's real good. Honestly, the best data I've ever had. My best-selling ultimate cheeseburgers, seasoned as they grill. Funerals can be emotionally devastating for a family to go through. Besides the sorrow, loved ones are left with the high cost of arranging a funeral. Funeral Advantage was formed to help protect your family when they need it most. It pays your loved ones up to $20,000 immediately for funeral and any other expenses. It's a good feeling to know that my family will be taken care of if anything happens to me. Funerals can easily cost $9,000 or more, but government benefits pay only $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the rest. It's so easy, just answer a few simple health questions. This is so affordable, even for someone like me who's on a fixed income. If you're 40 to 85, get information on how to protect your family. Funeral Advantage is something we all need. There's no risk or obligation. Call now. Get the facts about how easy it is to protect your family. Call 800-565-4082. That's 800-565-4082. Whether you celebrate mistletoe magic in a Cadillac XT5, festive gatherings in a Cadillac XT4, or reinventing traditions in a Cadillac XT6, this holiday season, Cadillac is celebrating you. Get 2.9% APR for 36 months plus 1,000 purchase allowance on the 2024 XT5 and XT6. At Hoffman Brothers, our heating professionals have over 40 years of experience. With colder temperatures expected to return this winter, you can count on us to ensure your heating system is running efficiently and effectively. Whether it's a simple repair, maintenance, or even replacing your entire system, our expert technicians will provide you with options to choose what's best for your home. Don't wait until it's too late. 
and call Hoffman Brothers today for all of your heating service needs. Mizuru tweets, confession, I really like Jack in the Box Tiny Tacos. My crunchy tiny tacos with creamy avocado lime sauce? There's a lot to like. I have a confession, too. One time, I... I've been advised to stop talking. Tiny tacos, get them regular or loaded. Welcome back. One of the guiding principles of this program is just because a politician says something doesn't make it true. That means sometimes we have to correct the record. Take this week's budget drama in St. Louis County, for example. County Executive Sam Page delivered his spending plan. The county council countered with theirs. The two sides disagreed about where to set spending levels and whether to raise taxes. In this three-page letter printed on official letterhead complete with the county seal, Sam Page uses the word cuts ten times to describe the council's more conservative plan. My cuts, your cuts, expected cuts, further cuts, budget cuts, and so on it goes. To the tune of $15 million. Back to that figure in just a moment. The politics were pretty obvious. Page was applying painful pressure in North County, trying to twist the arms of Democrats on the council to back his plan. Well, it backfired instead. They called his bluff and voted against him in the end. But they also pushed back against Page's dollar amounts and definition of cuts. Councilwoman Ritta Heard Day said these were not cuts. This was money they never had. So who was telling the truth? This letter from the county executive says $15 million in cuts. It appears to cite this other letter from the county council making $14.2 million in cuts, but cuts to Page's wish list, not cuts to actual government spending levels. We checked with government budget experts in different jurisdictions just to make sure they didn't have any rooting interest in this particular squabble. They told us the best and easiest way to compare apples to apples is to compare this year's budget and its spending levels to last year's, year over year. But even the council wasn't using that metric. They were comparing their 24 spending plan to a moving target, a revised 23 budget that was updated in the middle of the year, further muddying the waters here. So we dug into the numbers and found that this new budget would actually authorize the county to spend $33 million more than it did this year. Almost half of that increase goes to police, another $9.4 million to justice services, IT and elections each getting about $2 million boost. The prosecutor, county executive, administration, and counselor's offices would each take a modest haircut. In other words, government lawyers and bureaucrats in departments that can't seem to fill open jobs, well, those departments don't get to collect the checks that might have paid for them. So no, this budget does not include deep cuts. A few departments may have to tighten their belts somewhat. Most get more money. A few get a lot more. Only in politics can $33 million in more spending equal cuts. That does it for us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you right back here at the same time next week. Until then, we're off the record.